Everybody wants to kill this cat. The monk, the acrobat, even the diplomat. They all just hate her guts so much she's no class act. Yeah, everybody's gonna kill this cat. Yeah! Hey, it's really playing games, the extinction curse on the GM Graham. Joining me today are Brian as Faith the Tiefling Monk. Hello. Garrett as Fabian the Cat Folk Rogue. Hi there. Uh, Ross as Arshisk the Lizard Folk Swashbuckler. Hello. Other uh, Ross as Marion the Half Elf Oracle. Hello. And Patrick as Horatio the Half Elf Wizard. My plan is to lightning bolt her in the face. Well, that will be the topic of this session today. Will be <laughs> how you plan to assault the celestial menagerie and get revenge, get justice, much long awaited against this horrible feline foe, Mistress Dusklight, the ring master, the leader of the celestial menagerie, the bane of your existence for a long time now, many of you to differing degrees. And we'll see if you're able to do that because you have all emerged finally after what seems like an eternity down in the depths of Moonstone Hall, uh, experiencing visions of the Zolgath's plot to bring about this extinction curse title drop uh, and use these stones, uh, these um, uh, orbs to somehow... Uh, deplete them of energy and thereby deplete the life force of the, re the realm around you. So uh, there's that whole big saving the world bait. We'll get to that. But right now we're focused <laughs> on our personal vendetta against Dusklight. Uh, so you've come back to your circus, the Circus of Wayward Wonders, and found that Dusklight has gone on the offensive, has gone on while you were down in Moonstone Hall. And... Uh, Apparently, there has been arson committed. Your big top tent has been burned in several places. It is not fully destroyed by any means, but they will definitely take some time to repair the canvas and repair the rigging and whatnot. Uh, you also have learned that uh, many of the animals that were used in several of your acts were unfortunately killed during the attack. Uh, you can see on the circus NPC tricks, uh, several of your trick... Uh, your circus performers are unable to perform in your next show due to either their animals suffering injury or passing away, or in the case of the Flamboni sisters and Victor Volcano, uh, they did their best to try and put out the fires, being their kind of specialty is fire and what such. But in the process, although they stopped the fire, uh, suffered some injuries themselves as well. So. You come in, it is uh, middle of the morning, still a couple hours before midday. Uh, you have just met with the professor, given you kind of the damage report, the situation. Uh, there are people crying, there are people trying to, uh, you know, tend to their wounds and try to repair what they can. Um, there's a bit of a, uh, an uplifted sense from everybody as they see you approach and see you guys come back to the circus, but, um, you know... Uh, the professor leaves you to whatever you wish to try to accomplish at this point, so it's up to you what you do from here. Um, but before we get to that, and we're getting into, finally, the end of book two and this chapter where we will confront Dusklight, I wanted to run through everybody real quick and kind of go one at a time and just kind of gauge your character's... Uh, animosity, just problems with Dusklight for the group. You know, what it, what is your character's relationship to Dusklight at this point? What grievances do you have against her? What what's your kind of attitude? And we'll kind of get around, go around the group and say, just how how much do you truly despise uh, this this little this? Is little this like a over. roast? Sure, it's it's a <laughs> roast of it's a diss track for Dusklight. Uh, you know, you're just absolutely. <laughs> venting at this point can definitely be a thing or if you have a more nuanced uh kind of feeling toward her i'm curious to know if anyone wants to go first well marion wasn't the one to come up with the idea of uh starting the circus of wayward wonders but he was one of the early supporters because he hates this woman, this Catwoman, so much. Like, it is the order of things that Marion hates is ghosts at the top, 
followed by <laughs> Dust Blight. And it's a very close contest. Mm -hmm. And you can only get rid of one of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> but what happens if you get both? What happens if she dies and you get a ghost dust light? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Interesting possibility. Oh no. I hadn't thought of that. Nah, she's too evil. She is going straight to hell. <laughs> is that what happens? I don't know. Or or the abyss. Probably the abyss. <laughs> Probably. I imagine uh, for Fabian, when he was kind of on the road and on the move as on his own, he probably uh, mistook her fr for false friendship. You know, um, I imagine, you know, being another cat folk, I'm sure she was not evil up front. You know, it's one of those things that comes later when she owns you. Um, and I imagine as his acts got more and more humiliating, more recklessly dangerous, as he saw how she swindled the customers left and right, the patrons, I imagine things got darker and darker, especially, um, I imagine people were properly, you know, we would have witnessed all kinds of our, our peer performers being properly hurt for no purpose. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine it comes as a, I imagine there's many feelings of deep betrayals uh, to that. And probably, you know, there's not a lot of cat folk that we've encountered. I imagine she creates a horrible reputation for us all. That, that is very true. And I think uh, we discussed before Fabian potentially having uh, political ties uh, mm -hmm. that she may have some information, potential that blackmailing capability That's on. Very true. So she may, you know, maybe up to this point, the reason Fabian has not directly confronted her is there's that lingering fear of what she might know and what she might hold against you. But it comes a certain breaking point where there's just... Nothing else to be done to, but to confront her. Horatio Arsh, Fisker Faith, how do you feel about Dusklight? I think Horatio is um, actually probably has a pretty similar level of animosity as Marion does. Um, she is just sort of the antithesis of everything he believes as far as interacting with people and... You know, she wants to establish herself as this, like, personal or believes herself to be this, like, personal tyrant. Um, you know, like, yeah, she just, she treats people like bugs like under shit. her boots, you know. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that is the opposite of how, you know, Horatio thinks that things should be done, people should be treated. Um... And then also, like, personally, she has tried to kill us. Like, it, you know, not, not just ha has he seen people he knows and people he likes be treated like total garbage. Um, but then she, you know, we leave her, her circus, and she then tries to squash us for daring to leave us. Like, no, people should have their own freedoms to do their, their own thing. Fuck her. <laughs> she is indeed. Lightning tired. bolt to the face. <laughs> it's a solid plan. <laughs> oh, our sister uh, Faith? I mean, I, I, I don't even know if Faith has actually met her, but she did try <laughs> to kill her at least once that I remember. Mm. And, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, you know, kill me once, shame on you. Kill me twice. I'll sh the, sh the shame is still on you. I don't really know how the saying goes. But. <laughs> sure, but just simple, simple uh, punch back uh, motivation for Faith. I mean, she's not the, she's not the only person who tried to kill me. It's not like it's. I mean, there are a lot of people who have tried. So, <laughs> and most of them are dead now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I try to not kill them back. Don't fuck with Faith. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Oarshik Oarshisk also uh, hates Dustlight a lot. Um, the is it the sideshow? What are the the like the bad uh, boy and stump Sadie? And... Yes. So there is a um, really it's it's the unfortunate uh, historical um, kind of. Uh, what do you call it? The the preconceived notion Colonialist. of a, a freak show. 
uh, is what she typically does. You know, very much, oh, look at these weird, crazy, horrible creatures, and oh, we can, uh, you know, get a lot of people coming in to look at these freaks. Uh, so it's, you know, uh, that that is, she does have that portion and kind of that uh, exhibition in her circus. Uh, so I, I feel like Orsisk is friends with several of those uh, characters mm-hmm. and especially uh, Sump Sadi and uh, you know she has basically tortured these people mm-hmm. uh, and in some ways she picked up Olarshisk as like a child not as a, ch- a young teenager I don't know as, mm-hmm. uh, similarly to I'm sure what Sadi was a tadpole right and mm-hmm. Batboy was also you know younger so mm-hmm. Olarshisk is like uh, I guess hates her for man- manipulating everybody because in- initially it was like, oh, it's a fun adventure, a circus, mm-hmm. but immediately or very rapidly it was not that. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those other people, Oarsisk is angry, and also for himself since she uh, was the one who caused him to be mute. Um, so, you know, hates them for that, but especially hates her for the other, the sideshow people. Mm-hmm. It's the, uh, the sanctum of sublime spectacles is what she calls okay. it. And it's a very much tongue in cheek of sublime spectacles. And then there's, you know, she advertises it as a, as some kind of a freak show, uh, <clears throat> with these very much abused and mistreated, uh, performers who are basically forced to stay here and, uh, just exist in this yeah. horrible way. And I guess Oarsh just feels a little bit guilty that they all we all left and then didn't go back for them. Um, I don't know, for whatever reason, they were left behind. Uh, either because they chose to stay or because they missed the boat. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of a mix of the two depending on you know how tight they are in Dusklight's inner circle or their circumstances and what they could get away with uh, there uh, in a lot of cases, just the ability to escape and the ability to, you know, make an exit. Uh, and I, I see like the bat boy requires medication or something like that, that she's withholding mm-hmm. from him. So he couldn't really leave, I assume. Yep. Uh, so it is, she's definitely exploiting these people uh, horribly. So she is a very definition of petty tyrant. Yep, she sucks. People have people have gone to lesser links to topple kingdoms than she has to keep her circus underneath her clawed thumb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, her talons have tightly wrapped around and also kind of infixed her uh, in Escatar. She's manipulated people to the point where she can still exist here, uh, but maybe not for too much longer. Cool. Well, thank you all for sharing your thoughts on this horrible cat uh now we resume you back uh where you are in the circus of wayward wonders um amongst all your uh found family and the people who are looking up to you as leaders of this circus and basically the the sentiment you see behind each one of their eyes is give her hell uh <laughs> fuck some shit up it's a celestial menagerie uh but how you are about to go about doing that is up to you. So I leave it up to you how you wish to plan and coordinate your plans from here. Do I think I've asked this before. Do we... Is this version of the circus where it is now where we all were too? Yes. So like we have a, we have a general idea of what it looks like. Although I think I remember you saying that maybe some things have changed here and there. Indeed. In fact, I can show you a little bit. Uh, of a visual so kind of a big map but uh so the celestial menagerie is located in this uh grove this kind of forest just outside of town um easy walking distance like five or so minutes uh but it is kind of this compound there's the tree line is thick throughout and there is a high wrought iron fence with spikes at the top um and little like <laughs> baubles and lights and things that are in the trees there's always kind of a little bit of illumination around there as well uh so the main entry like the only really 
true entry point in and out is at the very south end of the complex. There's the main gate. Uh, coming in from there, uh, you know that there's a grounds to the west. Uh, this is kind of a um, sideshow games. Uh, you know, all the games are rigged. Uh, they are very much unfair, meant to protect people's money. Um, so that is, uh, let's see, I think it has the midway. That's what they typically call this area over here. Um, so that's where all those games and such are. It's very easy for people to come in and just absolutely lose some more money right off the bat. Uh, to the right uh, is where they keep some of their exotic creatures in a place called the Glen of Uncommon Wonders. Uh, you know that there is a satyr uh, named Adrivalo who is in charge of this glen. Um, and being a satyr is one thing, it's kind of weird, but uh, also typically has strange and exotic creatures in the Glen of Uncommon Wonders, but they are usually not very well treated. Um, kind of moving forward back over to here, there's a, a ticket booth, uh, kind of right here with the main entrance. Uh, the Big Top is kind of more toward the central area over here. Um, Three Ring Circus, uh, typical things with the uh, different wagons and pins behind the circus. Um, you know that uh, there's this big attraction kind of right there in the middle uh, that is this huge wheel. Uh, and this wheel, also all called the Hallowed Wheel, is supposed to be a spin-to-win kind of prize uh, game that, again, usually is, is rigged in some fashion, but it's this, you know, uh, the Wheel of Destiny, the Wheel of Fate. There's this whole very pseudo-religious feel to a lot of the things Desclad has put in the Celestial Menagerie. Uh, very undeserved, she's in no way associated with any kind of church or any kind of religious organization, but uh, she kind of brings that uh, aspect to a lot of her performances and a lot of, you know, the circus in general. Uh, over here is the building that you are all too familiar with, Oarsha's Square. The, the uh, you know, people are being kept over on that end. Uh, the Sanctum of Sublime Spectacles. Uh, so that is, you know about that. Uh, what you're unfamiliar with is there's this large, you know, multi-part wooden building... Uh, that typically is changed around often for different attractions, different exhibits and whatnot. Uh, so that's kind of a, a structure that you are not familiar with what might be on the inside of that. But you assume that's kind of the headquarters. That's the main structure for Dusklight and her minions. Uh, so you have kind of a, an overall layout of what the Celestial Menagerie is all about. So, <clears throat> so I guess... How often do they have put on a circus show? So, Dusklight is a cruel taskmaster. And so, uh, there is a single performance each evening, like every evening, to varying degrees. The weekend show usually is more stuff in it than the, uh, the day um, shows during the week. <clears throat> and it's usually just after sunset, uh, with the grounds opening to the public two hours before the show. So, evening performances every single night. Uh, the ground's open two hours prior, and people can go do the games and lose a bunch of money. Um, so, that is the peak times for the Celestial Menageries in the evening. So, how do we... What is our ultimate goal? And how do we want to do that uh, with regards to there being a show every night? Is our ultimate goal... I mean, obviously, in the end, to get rid of Dusklight. Right. The Still Menagerie. Um, Whether that's by putting Dusklight behind bars, or by uh, pushing her down some stairs. <laughs> I think that's the, uh, the, the thing that we need to do. Um, and I guess, do we want this to be more of a stealthy thing or do we want to go in uh, weapons drawn guns blazing we don't guns want to get blazing. ourselves into trouble we can just as easily right. get ourselves arrested How, we haven't talked to the constable yet have we no you've no. not I think that should be our first oh. 
because I feel like uh, even though the constable dislikes Thusklight, I think that uh, the constable is going to be our biggest ally, and we can't afford to let her be swayed or gone over or whatever. We have evidence that Dusklight was doing something, right? Yeah. Summoning demons, maybe. It was uh, some kind of letter. Uh, I believe I have in the party inventory uh, Dusklight's confession letter <laughs> is how I put it. Maybe it's um, in my personal inventory, one of the two. Has Dusklight ever run afoul of the law? Like, has she ever been tried for anything or arrested or anything? Um, like so you know that uh, she has done a fairly good job avoiding any kind of entanglement with the authorities and, and probably underhanded methods to keep on the good side. Uh, the Chief Constable Andera Pal Paldrine, uh, she has communicated to you that She's not a fan of Dusklight by any means. Uh, Paldrine is trying to clean up Eskadar and try to improve Eskadar's reputation. It usually is pretty bad. People think it's just a seedy port town. Um, and she's trying to, to change that image. So Dusklight does not help her endeavors whatsoever. Uh, but she's very much by the books, a very lawful character. So she's not going to... She wants to operate within the system as much as possible. But, like, summoning demons is obviously against the law, right? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's frowned upon. Special mark! <laughs> I, would, I would say <laughs> yes. It's safe to assume that uh, summoning demons is probably somewhere in the legal code of Escadar. Uh, yeah, she told, us, she told us she wanted tangible evidence. And I think uh, I, I somewhere here right? I wrote down the contents of the confession letter, but... Yes, happens to be. I mean, can't control F while I'm in roll twenty. <laughs> uh, there is a note. Um, this one right here. So, ah, yes. Ahead, we if we tell Paltrine, and she sends a force, or she decides that Dusklight, you know, this is evidence enough to put her on trial or something like that. She sends a force out. Is Dusklight and her circus likely to resist arrest violently? Well, she's not going to sacrifice herself, if that's what you... I'm sure I just mean, to... are they going to get a lot of their guards killed? Well, I don't know. It depends. I, guess. I mean, we can offer to go with them. If they're looking for a little bit of extra muscle. If like the cops need help. Because once... Yeah. Well, only one way to find out what uh, the constable might say. Dost thou head to the Enclave Square to seek the constable? Yes. Yep. And you move about through the mean streets of Escadar. So, uh... As usual, um, you have to wait just a little bit, but you're more and more recognized here around uh, the Enclave Square. Uh, so you're moved ahead to the front of the line. Some people waiting to see the constable will get a little annoyed at you because you're cutting in line, but this is important. Uh, so uh, after a short wait, you manage to go and interrupt uh, Andera working diligently in her office. And as you do so, you see both... Oops. I didn't mean to put the professor. I'm not really here. Ignore me. <laughs> Sorry, just an old man doddering around. Um, you see both the chief constable and uh, one of her um, men, Derricus Stollett, uh, there. Uh, Derricus seems a little uh, like st startled when you come in the the door. All oh, this circus, uh, this motley crew of circus folk. Uh, Paldrine is looking up from her work. Oh, uh, it's you. Uh, yes, guys, come in, come in. Uh, Derricus, uh, uh, you can go. Uh, he kind of nods to her, and he, he nods to you all. Good day. And closes the door behind him. 
Alright, so, uh, tell me, what have you found? What's going on? So, what do you have? Oh, you first. Oh, uh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna sound really... wild. Just to sort of set the tone. Um... Uh, Duskalade is involved in a conspiracy to summon demons and to... Maybe we should just leave it at that. She wants to summon demons to kill everyone here. Or at least she's indifferent to the fact that the demons will kill everyone here. Hmm. Now, uh, I'll be the first to say that I'm no fan of Duskalite, but those are two slightly different accusations. One is the uh, inaction toward demon summoning, and one is the active participation in demon summoning. Well, and... she, she's doing the participation in the demon summoning, and the demons are going to cause everyone on this island to starve to death. That part, meh, maybe a little more than you need to deal with. Alright. I'll say that I'm intrigued and concerned, uh, but, of course, uh, evidence is what I need to proceed to act upon this information. Uh, I will pull out the confession letter and give it to her. <laughs> handout number two. All right. Look, it's handout number two. She takes a moment. She reads the letter. Shrashek. Oh, gods. You're, you're not lying. She is involved in some dark shit. Yeah, the the last couple of lines are really. <sighs> she kind of puts Damn. that to the side. I, that's a strong case, but is there anything else you have on you that might further cement that she was there, that she was exploring Moonstone Hall, a anything like that? We have that list of um, the shopping list. Um, we, we we have the witness. The uh, he was a drug addict. I yeah. sigh. <laughs> this I pull it pull it out of or probably carry it over my back. This is her staff. Hold it out to her. We found it. She left it. Kind of probably anyone who has seen her perform, seen any performance of her circus, will recognize this staff. Hmm. Hmm. The staff is. The staff is good, but it's a little showy, you know. It's a little, little much. And I'm, I'm trying to bring up. A legal case and a staff is a lot, but you you mentioned something about another list, like written evidence is really great for this kind of thing. Technically, she didn't hear that unless she's fluent in sign language. Yeah, do I even? I don't know <laughs> if oh, I maybe she is. Maybe she is. <laughs> <laughs> I I Perhaps I translate for you out of habit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's somewhere. Yeah, we definitely have it. Um, I don't think I created an item for the list of things. Well, we have her list of things. It was like, was it torn into pieces, right? By the golem or something? It was in the room with the golem. Uh, the other thing is that it is uh, written in Amurun, which is the language of the oh, cat right. folk. But oh, right. luckily, you have a cat folk on your party. So withdrawing yes. this list and kind of Fabian, you're able to point out the translation uh, for the list. And then Dara kind of shakes her head. Uh, she gives the staff back. She opts instead for the written testament, written evidence you perceived before, takes the list and the letter. And says, all right, all right, we're going to do this. Okay. And she kind of takes out another sheet of parchment uh you see it kind of like a pre-filled form and she begins filling out a few fields and then eventually at the bottom gives her flute full signature and the wax seal upon it rolls it up hands it over she hands it toward you guys and said i've just written mistress dustlight an arrest warrant 
and I would like you all to carry it out. So, this crime that she's going to be accused of, what's the punishment for that sort of crime? <sighs> Ideally, I would like you to bring her in alive, so that she can be tried in the courts here in Eskadar. That she can be seen as the danger to society that she really is by all who live here. However, I understand you have a right to defend yourselves if something should happen. But you've proven yourselves so far to me that you can handle almost anything thrown your way. I would rather that you go in. I'd, my constables will be on retainer should something go catastrophically wrong, but you know what you're dealing with a lot better than we do when it comes to her. If she is brought in, she'll be tried. There will be punishment handed down by a judge. And I will make sure she is in the most secure of cells, with no contact to the outside world, no chance to escape. I give you my word on that. Do absolutely look forward to seeing a look on her face when we serve her this warrant. Oh, it's going to be great. I think you should do it. Oh. I'm honored. Well then. Good luck. And know that you're doing a just thing here. And all of Eskadar will thank you. And we will be thanking Eskadar for being such a gracious host. And Eric Eldrin nods at you all, takes the evidence, files it away, gestures toward the door to let you go with an official arrest warrant for Mistress Dustlight in tow. I'll just uh, add that to my inventory. <laughs> arrest warrant. You can just walk up shouting, constable's business. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. What, telling people to leave him alone? Exactly. <laughs> what time is it? All right. Uh, by this point, it's probably about midday. All right. So, we could go first thing we in the morning. Should s She opens her shows, doesn't she? Uh, she is the ringmaster, so typically she is present in some capacity for almost every performance. We should serve her at the start of one of her shows. That's a bit dramatic, don't you think? We are I, people. I, I <laughs> do don't want? like the idea of innocent people around when she, you know. Exactly. As soon <laughs> as possible. Whatever she's going to do. I think is the best. I agree. She should be willing to throw anyone in our way. Any innocent I mean, then, civilian. Then there'll be witnesses to her. She could just as easily sneak off the island if she wanted to, after escaping. I mean, I just, I, I don't think we should give her very many options in terms of collateral damage or resources. If we could get her away from her uh, supporters, that would be all the better. Hmm. Can we... We have some information about what she's trying to do. Is there a way that we can lure her out of the circus? She's pretty crafty, pretty clever, and apparently knows that... Uh, well, at least is not friendly to your presence here, having actively attacked you in the circus a couple times now. I just um, mean, can we, like, pretend to be Shroshek or something? And that's going to be pretty tough. With her well, Lizard Folk and Azulgath are, are fairly close in body type. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't, we don't know how they've communicated, right? How he would get in touch with her if he needed to. Correct. Nothing from the letter, I would think, kind of. Uh, indicates how they 
talked back and forth. We, 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 but we know how, how they were a- entering the moon Moonstone stone hall. hall. Mm-hmm. Ha- is she, ha- does she ha- have, what, what, didn't we have like somebody spying on the entrance or something? Uh, uh, we had somebody go by, uh, the guy who is good at blending in. What's his name? Oh, yes. Uh, the bearded, bearded man. man. Yes, the bearded man. Uh, Gideron. Uh, where'd he go? Sideshow of everyday. Here we go. Gideron Elbus. This handsome fellow. He scoped it out for a little bit. Uh, yeah, you can certainly go talk to him if you'd like. Yeah, I guess if Dusk like knows we are coming, is she the type to stay? I guess she has no reason to think that we, we would be doing anything that would harm her in any way. Well, you could certainly get a report from Gideron if you'd so desire. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is we we do have the possibility of just, you know, we walk up and we try and convince as many of the remaining people in the celestial menagerie, many of whom are perfectly reasonable. This is true. Just leave because, hey, we have an arrest warrant. Do you want to get arrested for Dusklight? No, you don't. But Dusklight may have. Yeah, I, 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 I think if, if if she finds out about the arrest warrant, she will try and run. Yeah. Or yeah. Or, or, or we could say us. that we're interested. We've we've seen that she is serious about uh, trying to stop us. So we've seen the error of our ways and want to talk to her about joining again or something. That's a fun idea. Under the warrant. <laughs> That is a very fun idea. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'd, re- I'd rather just show up brandishing the arrest warrant and, you know, everyone everyone we run into until her is, hey, do you want to stay or do you want to go? Exits that way. I guess part of my worry is we get there, we confront her, and she calls 20 other people to come fight us, to stop us people didn't leave before it's likely that they had a reason they couldn't leave whether it be blackmail or medical needs or they just are too afraid i wouldn't expect them to come to our cause or even necessarily stand out of our way easily there's a difference between not leaving and uh (laughs) <laughs> resisting an arrest warrant for someone else. Those but are think, two pretty different things. But I think we have to show them that if they just leave, that we could protect them from Dusklight or something like that. Right. We have the arrest warrant. That's the that's the magical ticket we have. I got a golden ticket. <laughs> You'll have to do the convincing then. You know, I don't. I don't. Look, we weren't we weren't able to convince like Toscana to come with us, but I can't see her fighting for Dusklight. About- She's an accountant and a genuinely pleasant human being. Well, genuinely pleasant halfling being. <laughs> Can we ask Victor who he thinks might be willing to change allegiance? Uh, you certainly can. Uh, give me one second here. Um, sure, you can go check in with Victor Volcano. Um, he... let's see. It's only been, you know, a week or a couple of weeks since he's, he was part of the circus, you know? Yes, he is definitely, uh, recovering at the moment, but... Uh, you, after returning from the Enclave Square, uh, coming around, um, you, uh, come over to where Victor Volcano is, and actually, we have some, uh, apropos music here. 
Oh. <laughs> uh, so Victor Volcano is there. You see he has some scorch marks, some burns. Um, not too, too bad. Maybe second degree at the, at the worst. Uh, up his arms a little bit. And you see kind of a little bit on his chest. And he's trying to nurse it with some aloe plants, kind of rubbing it around. Uh, he comes up to you. Ah! You have returned. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, forgive the things around me, but uh, how can I help you? Um, sorry that you had to deal with Dusklight's crew again. Eh, I've always kind of expected it. There's probably, you know, there was always a feeling in the back of my mind that they were going to come again. And they did, so. Um, if we were to go back and we were to try to convince people to defect from her circus uh, because we're our plan is to arrest Dusklight to be clear we have, an, we have a warrant for her arrest from the constable holy shit Ugh. this is not us randomly showing up and trying to convince people to join our circus this is the law is here to take her in. How many people do you think? Who do you think would walk away? Ooh. Or who do you think would stay? Whichever the easier number is. Uh, let me think. Who do you think would die for her? That's the question. Uh, okay, so here we go. Um, well, <laughs> she has uh, a bodyguard, uh, Mazel, and this one is utterly devoted to her would absolutely fall on his sword for her a hundred percent doesn't matter is convinced that she is some kind of goddess i don't understand but um Adrivalo, he has a pretty good thing going on he's uh, in the inner circle for sure and he's probably not going to descend either uh in the creatures he has are very scary so they probably he will try to use them against you. Uh, Kagrud is a coward and would absolutely just run away as soon as you even present even the mildest threat whatsoever. Uh, Delamar, I think you've met before. He may not actually be there. He's usually in town, but, um, you know, he's a, he's, he's a slimy man. He's, you know, going to take the most advantage. He's, he would probably beg for his life and try to offer you something before he does that. Um, Ruana, you have also fought. She is... Uh, very mean, um, but I, from what I heard, um, not around the circus too often after you kind of, you know, beat her back. Um, Evora! Maybe. Maybe the strong woman might, you know, uh, find a better place here with this circus. Honestly, I think she's a, a pretty good fit. Uh, not too bad. Um, let's see. Kalkik. Uh... Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, and some of those in the um, in the show um, where you were, Warshisk. Uh, Kalkek won't be a problem. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, all right then. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, Jasmail? Um, yeah, probably. I don't know. She's very elusive, you know. No, no way to really tell what, what she's all about. <laughs> Um, Creel and Pitkin, um, they are, they are idiots, so maybe, if you can yeah. present a reasonable argument. Um, uh, Danica, you, well, don't, don't worry about that one either. Uh, I'm not sure what Jellico did, he kind of fucked off after you, you know, we fought before. So, may, maybe he turned a new leaf after getting his ass beat, I don't, I don't know. Um, like him. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, Toscana... <sighs> I don't know. Money talks, for sure, especially with this guy. I'm sure you know this Horatio. But, you know, she also has kind of a, a, a home that she's uh, uh, created for herself out of this difficult environment. She, you know, has been around. She's a, a little bit older, so I don't know if she will have such a monumental change as something she'd do favorably. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, then, of course, um, the Quarterlings, the Living Atlas, the Bat Boy, Flynn, and, well, Flynn's here already. And some say, they, of course, that they would jump at the chance to get out, but, um, 
And other than that, well, if shit starts going down, the the, the day laborers, the, the roustabouts, they're, they're not going to stay either. So it's a much shorter list than I thought. It has okay. always been the problem. And despite how terrible she is, Dusklight has a way of persuading people, keeping them on retainer. So we have a handful of maybes, a handful of yeses, and several no's. I'm sorry, I could not give better information and news to you, but... No, that's good. We could be pretty persuasive ourselves. <laughs> I know. So, we heal up and then we head over? I guess so. Because all ready for this, but now that it, we we're just gonna go in there, it's still a bit scary. Yeah, no. <coughs> I left That's fine. Place. We'll we'll wing it. All right. So resting, healing. Uh, is the intent to still go today, or are you trying to head out tomorrow? Or the next day? How is Horatio on spells? Um... I have... Burned both, both of my hastes, my sudden bolts. Um... You have any lightning bolts? Good question. Uh, nope. Burn my lightning bolt. Okay, so we gotta wait till tomorrow then. <laughs> I so have the one thing you wanted to do. Was I have a the freedom face. of movement. Yeah, I mean the the only offensive spell I have left is a first level magic missile. Um. Well, okay. Yeah, I used blur. Like I've, I've got a, a glitter dust resist energy, a higher level resist energy, freedom of movement. Um, so I've got oh yeah, and we I've only hit level staff. eight today, right? Yeah. So yeah. So if I'm we that spell slot down too. Yeah. If we wait until tomorrow, then I can reprepare. Yeah. Tomorrow. Afternoon. And we can wake up bright and early. Maybe most of the celestial menagerie will still be sleeping, since That's... they had to. More. Sounds like a good plan. Oh, Fabian. Have you ever thought of fighting while invisible? Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting question. <laughs> uh, I might appreciate that. Um, Does attacking still, not break invisibility? Not at fourth level. Not at fourth level. Oh, Although it's it's boy, duration that's... one fight, to, it reduces to one minute when you're when cast at fourth level. But oh, sneak attack every time. Greater yep. I mean, and I still have a number of interesting things that we've gathered that might be useful in a climactic battle. I still have a haste potion. I've got uh, some poisons. I've got, I got some stuff. We might be able that might make it fun. Pile on the damage. So it sounds but like we're going morning. to take a long rest, heal up your injuries. Uh, yeah. For convenience's sake, uh, since you are at your home base, there's no immediate danger and you have plenty of access to healing, we'll say you're able to fully heal yourselves, so all hit points restored, and prepare those spells and spell slots as you so desire. And uh, how early do you think you might head out the next morning? Do we want to be there at like 4 a.m. or... Too early. Too early. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think not long after sunup. Yeah, let's let's go let's go at dawn. Also at dawn. <laughs> let, let's take down Dusklight at dawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poetic <laughs> justice. Has Sifjan uh, managed to procure any arrows? <laughs> oh, I wanted to talk to him as well. This is convenient. Ah. 
Well, rather I want to put an order in with him. Hey, if you're going that way, what if I just give you like a order slip and you can deliver it for me and let me know what he thinks? You know what? Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, order some, uh, some more infiltrator picks if uh, you're going that way. See if you can get a hold of any. Yep, you got it. Great. See you later. So, <laughs> does that mean you head over to Sufjan's little tent store? <sighs> At least somebody does. Yeah, all right. I uh, I walk in and I'm like, "Hey, Sufi, how's it hanging, compadre?" <laughs> hey, um, it's it's hanging pretty good. Great, great, great. So, um, How listen, are you? we have a pretty big day ahead of us. Got a very tight schedule, oh, okay. but. Uh, you know, we're going to take down Mr. Stuff's Glide. No big deal. Anyway, wow, um, got to know, I did ask you to get some arrows a couple of days ago. Where are you on that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I got the arrows. Um, I actually managed to get a, a lot of them. So, I have, like, I don't know. I think I counted 80. 80 wow, arrows. that's nice. All right. Yeah, got a good deal. I can sell them to you. That's uh, one silver for each coral of ten. Or quiver? When it's an when it's a bow and arrow, is it a quiver or is it a coral? I don't care. Um. All right. Tell you what, I'll give you four silver pieces all for right. half of them. Forty arrows. No problem. All right. Did you want me to tie them together, or how do you? you uh, no, I, I have a, uh, I've got quivers. Oh. So I'll just, yeah, I'll, I got some string here. I'm gonna tie it together myself, and uh, my pal, our pal, Fabian, he's got a list for you, man. Oh. And also for me, um, let me know. If you can find a really almost soup ask. Sorry, I, I was reading, so I don't quite hear that. A, a soup mask? The, the, the scariest mask you can. The sc the scariest mask? Yeah, yeah, I'm picturing something like a devil, you know, maybe with some horns and a long pointed nose. I want to incorporate it into my act. Oh. Uh, okay. Um. Well, I'm. I'm not really that creative, but I'll see if I can maybe ask around town. Maybe there's a mask maker that make you yeah. a mask. Yeah, that would be perfect. Okay. All right. So, uh, it's been real, but uh, God empires to topple. Got a got a mean woman to put behind bars. So uh, check you later. Oh, um, while I'm here, can I buy those manacles off you? They might come in handy. Oh, excuse oh. me. And oh. I guess the lock. I didn't. I didn't see you there. Uh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Faye. Um. Yeah, the lock and the manacles. That's just you know. Just gonna let me go get them for you. <laughs> it's uh five gold pieces for all together. All right, here you go. Is five gold pieces? All right. Well, use these responsibly. This is a a real metal lock, and the manacles are, are real too. So you can you can imprison someone against their will with these. I mean, we are trying to arrest somebody. Oh yeah. Mary had mentioned that. Okay. Do you need a bag for these or, or anything? Uh, I got one. I my okay. own bag. I'm, I'm environmentally responsible. That's that's good. All right. Well, enjoy. 
I guess. You too? Thanks. Uh, Favian, what is on your list for Sufjan? Oh, uh, I just wanted to get um, some Infiltrator uh, picks since I broke my, my one Infiltrator pick when I was uh, in, in Dark in that last dungeon. Gotcha. So it's a list that just says Infiltrator lockpicks on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, Sufjan takes it, nods. I, I guess I'm going to go to some back alleys and see who sells these tools. <laughs> you guys have fun uh, arresting Dusklight. Give her what's for. Okay, the idea of Sufjan <laughs> navigating the criminal underworld is hilarious. <laughs> uh, what else is going are on Are we going to have to bail him out of jail later? <laughs> Side quest, rescue Sufjan. <laughs> oh, hi guys. Uh, did, I'm, I need you to uh, pick me up from jail. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm a crime lord now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have definitely gotten all Sufjan into a pickle. Um, any other purchases? Or are you guys good with what you got? Do we need healing potions? Is that a thing we need? I don't know. A healing potion for faith. I guess we have heal and healing things. Yeah, and I have, um, what do you call it? The Saint, Saint Bomb? Are we, like, not using that because it's part of a magic set? I don't know. Maybe we are using it. I can't remember. <laughs> Let me see. It was on the list of, like, special items, right? Hmm. That she was trying to uh, accrue. Well, there was a sense uh, when you spoke with Ulfadar that kind of, since you freed the temple from corruption, he would kind of let you have some of the things that you found and not be too upset about it. So, okay. he's really the only lingering resident of Moonstone Hall, officially. So, Alright, well... He's... Nothing else from Sufjan. Any preparations, anything you do, so you get ready to go to the Celestial Menagerie early in the morning. Um, Sufjan, of course, was awake. He gets up, like, super early. Um, anything you do, it's, like, about six... Well, it's probably a little bit, like, more seven. You're in, you're in the winter months. At this point, we were actually... On uh, Oath Day, nineteenth of Neth. A lot of. Th uh, but are there. we in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere? I think Absalom's kind of like in the middle, and northern northern middle of Galarian. So <laughs> it's it's a little chilly. It's not, and you're also by the coast, so there's a lot of like wind kicking up. So um, Oath Day, the day. Uh, pacts are signed, oaths are sworn. Uh, traditionally, we'll, we'll see. All right. So, you know where the celestial menagerie is. You begin your walk, kind of around into town, and a little bit back out of it. Are we just striding in, or are we talking? We're trying to talk one on one with people as we meet them and try to convince them to defect, right? It is, it is up to you guys how you approach. Any spells or things you wish to do as you begin to approach the the main entrance, or if you're trying to uh, somehow pierce the outer perimeter, or if you try to walk in through the front door. I'm going to auger this shit. Oh. Um. What's going to happen if we just go in through the front door? All right. So, let me see here. Fabian, or not Fabian, sorry, Marion. Uh, Marion, you peer into the ghostly ether around you the different spirits communicating, always shouting, always saying these things to you. They're annoying, but they can be useful sometimes. 
and you get the sense of this restlessness, these spirits that have been uh, either directly or indirectly affected by dusk light. Um, describe you all going through the front door. Uh, the result you get back hmm hmm unfortunately it is a case of weal and woe both a, a bit of good and a bit of bad but not not full misery uh, there seems to be some some advantages and some disadvantages to proceeding through the front gate. Um, good enough for me. So, I imagine Dusklight hasn't really changed where she, like, sleeps. Um, where in the camp did we know of her sleeping or staying? I imagine she has her room filled with, like, expensive knickknacks and illegal goods and things like that. So I'm like stays in the same place sure so if the big top is uh, oops wrong thing the big top's over here right uh and the back of the big top where all the fence uh, all the um wagons and animal pens and all that backstage stuff is uh you know her quarters is most likely somewhere in this vicinity um but you've None of you would have ever had a good enough reason or given the amount of access to go into her quarters. She's, right. That's yeah. kind of a, a, a off limits. She will 100% punish you brutally if you try to go into her quarters and her domain without express explicit permission. Yeah. Um, beyond that, too, uh, getting to that area is dubious. Um, she's very kind of secure as far as you know there may be a secret entrance that she uses in and out but this is a solid wall over here there's only really one entrance and exit out of this building that you know of and it is over here right there yeah is this a like a tent structure or is it a building it is a building it is a, a wood you know only it's only like one story. It's a low, long building that kind of wraps around that side of the circus tent. Um, if I were to get up in the trees, would I get a good vantage of the circus in general? Like above things? Um, I guess my thought is like the party could go in. I could hang out up in like above to see like if something's going on while, people, while the party's going in trying to convince people. And how would you tell us that something was going on i'd come if it was an emergency it depends on the emergency okay <laughs> if it's urgent i'll come get y'all if not um i mean i have this whistle, have whistle. oh yeah you do oh my whistle baby that's perfect i have a signal whistle in fact there you go since I can't get people's attention audibly sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, with climbing through the trees, uh, it would definitely, you know, be a, a sneaky vantage point to see. Uh, you couldn't see... I mean, you'd be able, you could probably climb up to a point where you're higher than the fence that surrounds the perimeter and probably about with the roof level of the big wooden building. Um, the big top tent is larger than the building, so and it's enclosed. So you wouldn't see much going on in there. Uh, depending on the position, people will see what's happening in the backstage area with the wagons, uh, and kind of you know from that. The one consideration, though, because she hangs all these lights and glass and things like that, that's to illuminate the woods to a certain extent. So if you're climbing through, you know that you would there's a better chance that someone might see you than normal because there are these colored lights and these different things and little bits of glass hanging in there. So, you know, if a shadow passes through one of those, it's more visible than if it were just regular tree, uh, unadorned tree cover. 
Okay, well maybe I'll just go in with everybody else then. It's up to you as you make your approach at dawn. Oh, um, one whistle for they are mounting a defense, two whistles for she's running away. Okay. One whistle for mounting a defense, two for she's running away. And this is the only entrance and exit that we know of, right? Correct. Okay. Um, would it be possible for me to get on this roof, like behind the the gable or the point of the roof, to like look out and use uh, the top the peak, the peak of the roof as cover? So it isn't uh, a gabled roof; it's a flat roof with a little bit oh. of a slope to it. Well, if I like. You know, took cover. Uh, yeah, if you stayed really prone. low, you know, and kind of, you know, against the the high side, it's probably sloped so the water runs like right to left, so it drains off this way. Um, yeah. So you could get really low and kind of be peering up over there, but uh, it is a w you know, noise may be somewhat of a factor. I mean, you're pretty quiet and pretty stealthy, but then you know, if somebody's walking around on the roof. Of a, of a wooden roof like that. What does the party think? Do they want me to come with them or try to go up to the roof? I, I, I think we should not split the party. I <laughs> completely agree with that. <laughs> Probably the best idea. I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. mean, uh, ha has obvious benefits. Um, we get in a fight without you, bad. You get in a fight without us, re. Well, bad. I wouldn't be far. I'd be, you know, like 40 <laughs> feet from you. He is one of the fastest people in the party. If you're like, if I you're would, if you're that close, that makes sense. I, I'm not trying to go far away. I'm trying to like still be within like I can get to you in a couple of seconds. Secret agent of Arshisk. Can you be sneaky though? It depends on uh, a lot of things. How many <laughs> I did not prepare a lower level invisibility. How many rocks are on the roof? Uh, a 10 minute I'll... invisibility would be great for this and I did not prepare one sorry um... so Arshisk you want yeah. to try stealth around up on the roof hang out on the corner here watch what happens as the, your allies try to enter Uh, no, I think I'll go with them after all that debate. <laughs> think about it. You should think about just the super cool ninja I lizard know. mission. It was a cool idea. Infiltrating, idea. like, <laughs> up on the roofs. <laughs> but then you, you look at your squishy companions <laughs> and you being the big, strong tank of the group. I'm like, hmm. They, they need my protection. There is a cat behind you. Responsible. And not... A dusk light. Nope. <laughs> or he can act like it sometimes. All right. So we'll go in the front and try to see if we can convince. As a group, you all make your way heading toward the Celestial Menagerie. Now let's see how this map works. Oh, very So, sad. yes, you will need to zoom in because it is a big map and it's not scaled super well, but... Try to redo everything. I'll go ahead and zoom everyone over to here. Way that we can. What does my cloak do? For me? Uh, whatever. We continue. All right. You come to the front entrance. You see three figures guarding the gate. Two of them look to be strong, burly types. Uh, you see each of them appears pretty well armored. Uh, they each have a chain shirt uh, and these clubs, wicked spiked looking things, kind of leaning against the fence. Uh, you see the one on the left kind of... <sighs> kind of look up, seemingly disinterested. 
Um, but as you approach, uh, taking a few steps forward toward you all, you see a familiar halfling. Uh, you see Toscana Sprightly, or Little Sprightly as she's known, the ticket taker, financier of the Celestial Menagerie. Uh, as she as you approach, she looks up to you. Afraid we're closed. I have to come back later. Is that, is that what you say? Is that what you say to an old friend, Sprightly? Good to see you, Toscana. Well, like I said, uh, we're closed. Probably have no business here. Should probably leave. Look, we have an arrest warrant. Wow, just dust coming, light. coming right out with it, huh? Yep. Because I think Toscana Sprightly is reasonable. She, she does seem very reasonable, brother. She kind of cocks an eyebrow, looks. Uh, do you present the document to her? I'll, uh, t- uh, yeah, I'll take it out of my uh, belt pouch or whatever and show the the seal off. Kind of looks at it up and down. Hmm. Well, that is something. You know that she needs to be stopped. And, and frankly, your talents are wasted on her. Hmm. I think you probably need to offer her a better deal. Well, I'm All not... you really have to do is walk that direction for, say, an hour. None of us wants anything to get violent. But we have authorization to stop her if she doesn't come with us nicely. That includes anybody who wants to shoot crossbows at us. Uh, I personally do not want that to be you. The two ruffian-looking fellows kind of like crack their necks, shoulders, you see them kind of loosen up a little bit. One of them picks up the club. Toscana sighs. Well, all right then. Well, I'm not gonna stop you. Don't think I could change all your minds. And Well, Calder Brothers, you've always been couple of smart cookies. So, I won't stop you. She takes a few steps back, and then she's about to go in. She turns. But these two will. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. (laughs) And you see them crack, swing the clubs around once, twice, ready, and now they are ready to go against you. I need everybody to roll me some initiative. I thought she would be more reasonable. She didn't survive this long without... So she's gone in and closed the door, or what? Um, the gate's still partially ajar. She just went inside. We have no reason to kill these people, though. Let's try to do this as non-lethally as possible. Alright. So, first up. Marion, you see these rough-looking fellows begin to look in your direction. What do you do? Oh, hold on. 
I have to look up something. There we go. How many actions is that? It's two. Okay. I'm going to start by... I'm going to start by glaring at the ruffian on the right. All right. The one on the right, you do a mean glare at. It's against their will DC. Yeah. A 21, unfortunately, will be insufficient to uh, get this bruiser to back down. Oh, well. I'll follow that up with a debilitating dichotomy. Debilitating dichotomy! Oh my gosh, you reveal a glimpse of the impossible conflicts between the divine anathema behind your quest, forcing you to reckon with another's conflicts as well! You and the target each take this mental damage with a will save, and the target is stunned if it critically fails. You get a success one better. So DC 26 will save. Let's see how this guy on the right does with that. Um, oh, that's a critical success. It is a critical success for me. Uh, he gets a regular success. So he uh, takes half of that. 15. 15. It's 31, yeah. So 15 points of mental damage. No, 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 no. Oh. I, I also have to make a will saving throw. That's what that was. Oh, wait, no, I see the damage up there. Wow, I just happened to roll a 31 both times. Never mind. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, I apologize for derailing the, everything. No, I thought it would be at the bottom. It's all good. Uh, so you kind of look at this one and then look in even harder and manage to resist the dichotomy affecting you and this psychic waves assault this one. You kind of like... Ugh, ugh, ugh. Now just seems angry at you. Uh, right. so that was Marion Oarshisk. So does uh, the... Oh, crap, what was her name? We just had her name. Toscana? Toscana, is she like proceeding into the circus, or is she like stopped behind the gate to watch us? Um, she goes out of sight, kind of behind the fence, so you don't know where she is roughly. But you don't see her through like the sliver that you can see uh, into the fence. Uh, should I go after her? No. Okay. Like. She said that she wouldn't stop us. Yeah, but she might. But she's hedging her bets. If she warns them, we're gonna be having a lot harder time. Um, I'm gonna slither up. All right. And go in for a trip. Okay. A trip. Ooh. 33 is successful. You kind of quickly go and swipe the leg out from underneath this one. Uh, boom! He hits the ground with a loud thud. Um. Yeah, and I guess I'm gonna just attack him. Oh, but we're not trying to kill them. Give him the people's elbow. <laughs> um. Bam! All right. Do I do precision damage on that? And is it bludge? How does that work? It's it's, it's agile finesse. I know, but it... like with panache, I do precision damage. Yeah. Precision. Precision is the same as the damage on the strike. Okay, so I do an extra three damage on top. I don't have it programmed in for a, a panache fist attack. <laughs> a panache fist. So it's an extra three damage, I think, on top of that. So 13 bludgeoning? Yeah. All right. Uh, you go and bam on top of him. Uh, cool wrestling maneuver. Um, so... what he's gonna do okay um as you come down on him oof, 
card kind of into his chest, uh, he's going to take a reaction and attempt to just, like, kick you square in the chest. Uh, so he is going to make a shove attack against you. Uh, so I, what's your fortitude DC? Uh, four, 20, 24, I guess. Yeah. Oh, shit. A critical. It's a critical shove. Um, so, uh, what happens is... Yeah, basically, you come down on top of him. He just gets uh, right in your chest and with a surprising amount of force, ugh, shoves you back 10 feet and knocks you prone. <laughs> just like t sends you toppling as the tea kettle uh, back away from him and then back onto the ground. Uh, he's prone. He does not stride after you, but he does kind of like ugh, just kick you back as an opportunity. Uh, so I think that's the end of Arshisiska's go. Yeah. Uh, so the other one here. Oh wait, was that at the end of my turn? Uh, no, it was. It was. It was after your. He did a, my turn. He did a reaction to you attacking him. But the, the, the attack was your third action because he moved, you tripped, and then you punched, right? Yeah. Is my turn immediately over, or can I take a free action? M maybe. What's the free action? Kip, Kip up. up. <laughs> Uh, if it's a free action, yeah, it's definitely, yeah. You go and use that backward momentum like a backward somersault and get right back up on your feet. Uh, yep. He's like, Ugh! Uh, so I think the other one is going to, uh, probably come up and try to beat your ass with a big club. <laughs> so this other one just comes over. Ugh, huge haymaker swing with the club toward you, Oarshisk. Uh, so it's going to do that. Uh, mm, does a 39 hit you? Oof, that's a crit. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> Let me see here. 39 is, is pretty high. Really? You sure? It's pretty good. How's that? Well, it's, it's not bad. Um, what am I looking at? Um, okay. So, first and foremost, uh, you are going to be taking, uh, 34 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. As it hits you. Uh, and with that, uh, it attempts to shove you with that blow. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh... My 42, 24. Um, yes, 24. Okay. I think he still has to use his third action to do the shove. Um, so on the shovey shove, uh, so that's a 30 against your fortitude DC. Fortitude, yeah, yeah, that'll succeed. Just okay. a regular success. Okay. So, um, Man, I, as soon as I get back up, I'm just like assailed from the, the left or whatever. Yep. Just boom, the other one knocks you away from him. Uh, but then that'll be his turn, so Horatio. I am going to use... Non-lethal spell as my first action. And then cast... The electric Arc! Okay, uh, so the one on his feet makes a reflex save, uh, fails, take 18 points of damage. And the one on the ground uh, will also fail, take 18 points of damage. Um, 
Alrighty, but these guys look pretty tough. You seem to be still going. Uh, anything else, Ratio? That's not your turn. That is it. Faith. Uh... I'm going to move. To here. Right. And I'm going to flurry on the one that's on the ground. Okay. He's flat-footed to your attacks. 31 shall hit for 12 bludgeoning damage. Oh! 25. Because he is flat-footed on the ground, that will hit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was one, two, third action. I'm going to punch him some more. Okay. He needs to make a fort save against stunning strikes. The last one misses. Yep. Uh, gets a 35. That will succeed. It's a tough dude. Doesn't care about your stunning punches. <laughs> That's Faith. That's Faith. On to Fabian. Okay. Use an action to get it here. So we're nice and flanking, and then um, I will quickly add the minus two since I'm doing lethal damage to hit, and then I will try to non lethally rapier this guy. <laughs> you know, yeah, he'll, he'll be healing later. For the I, imagine. Arm. I don't want to. Yeah. Um, Some so quick slashes. So first strike. Uh, 20 will not hit even when it is flat footed. And then the second swipe. Oh also no! Miss. You go. You're trying not to really hurt him, so you kind of just do a few things, and he kind of dodges left and right. <laughs> he levies the huge club, ready to whack you. Um. Okay. So that was Fabian. Uh, this other guy. Uh, he is going to use an action to stand up. <clears throat> kind of using the big club for leverage. Uh, and as he stands up. He is going to take that club and then swing it around at Faith. Rude. Uh, that's a 35 to hit you. That will hit. All right. Regular hit, not a crit? Not a crit. Okay. So you take uh, 21 points of bludgeoning damage. And then uh, what's your fortitude DC? Uh, d d 26. Okay, uh, you take the hit, but you kind of block it with your hands and dig your heels into the dirt and just <laughs> slide back a few inches. The shove is not successful as this bruiser gets onto his feet. Uh, and that was his third action attempt to shove, so then we're back onto Marion. I will cast shield. Shield. Then I'll move up to here, and I'll use my last action to draw my scroll of heroism. Scroll of heroism comes out from your pack. Oh, Arshisk. Um, having just been shoved by this guy, I'm gonna like leap back on him and try to like uh, grab him. I guess we'll try for a grab. Why not? Okay, against reflex DC. Um, fortitude. Fortitude. Oh, well, uh, we'll see what happens. You know, whatever. Uh, a 32 is a success. You kind of go, he's not expecting it. You grab and kind of your claws sink into the chain shirts. You have them like firmly by his torso. I'm like, Ugh! And then I'm going to go in for another punch. Um, but it'll be a second attack. Oof. Uh, no, he kind of like takes the club up and some of blocks your claw out of the way just um, and then I guess I will uh, I'll raise my shield alright so one hand grabbed on the other one kind of interposed there Yeah, sure thing uh, well then it goes on to his turn uh, and as you've got him grabbed there uh, he is going to look at you in kind of this confidence and cockiness of having pushed you back and being bigger and stronger than you are. Uh, he is going to attempt to demoralize you. Uh, so what is your will, DC? I think the same. Yeah, 24. 
24. Okay. Uh, per his terrifying sneer ability, uh, <laughs> if he rolls a success, he gets a critical success instead. Ooh, and he too. rolled a uh, 29. So indeed, you kind of suddenly are like, oh, it's this big bruiser type uh, kind of uh, affects you. You are frightened too. I wish I had that. Yeah. It's a terrifying sneer. <laughs> it seems like a very thematically Marian thing. I guess that's a visual thing, too. Uh, yeah, just like a... Yeah. Um, so he does that, uh, and then probably still grabbed, he just, like, ugh, takes the club high over to just smash it down on your face. Uh, so this will be great clubs, because grabbed is just immobilized and flat-footed. So he just does this. Ooh. Um, it's only a 22 to hit you. Uh, with um, your AC minus two because of being frightened. How much? It's a 22? 22 to hit. Nope. Okay, you kind of, even though you're scared, you move him out of the way, you move the shield, it kind of blocks off the side of the shield, and <clears throat> so he didn't miss you. Uh, I think... Um, he says another thing. Uh... Yeah, so he's going to take this momentum from the Great Club, Great Club Attack and try to hit you on the back swing with it. I see. Uh, so, he's going to try to hit you again. Uh, and this will be a 32 to hit you. <sighs> That's a regular hit. All right. Uh, 18 points of bludgeoning damage. Just kind of smacks you upside the head. But doesn't have the action for a shove attempt, so just kind of Whack, hits you in the backswing. Uh, Horatio. I think I'm going to do the same thing again. Uh, so I will. <laughs> On lethal spell. And then. Electric arc. Alright. Ooh! The first guy, after sneering real hard at Oarshus, gets a critical failure. That is one away from max damage on Electric Arc. And that's, that's a 38 points of damage to this one. Uh, and then the one behind uh, rolls a reflex save and succeeds. So it takes nine points. So a little aftershock there. Uh, the one uh, behind closest to you, Faith, is now bloodied. You see him kind of... Ugh, ugh, Looking a little worse for wear. So it's ratio onto faith. Uh, well, I guess since he's bloodied, I'll try to make him even more bloodied, and I'll punch him a little bit. Do some punches. So I'll flurry on him. Ugh, Twenty-one. That's gonna miss. I will not do it. <laughs> try harder. Fifteen. <laughs> this is not going great. I'm gonna keep trying though. Twenty-six. He needs to be flanked or something, doesn't he? 26 is not quite enough. Yeah. It's just so close, he manages to bring up the club at the very last second and carries your punch aside. Hey, well, I'll, I'll like, kind of faint towards him and then punch the guy behind me instead. <laughs> you are flanking. But I'm flanking. <laughs> but... It's also going to miss. <sighs> really nice damage, though. <laughs> Flurries I, I, everywhere. I, I, but... I kind of wish I could like not see that damage. <laughs> not have <laughs> to know. Uh, one, like. one off maximum. Uh, Fabian, on to you. Okay, let's try to be less embarrassing. Since he is <laughs> four-way flanked and grabbed. Uh... Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, duh, duh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I, this guy's, you know. You're like thwapping the side of the rapier against his back, like. Whoop, 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 and he just kind of he has a chain shirt, doesn't feel anything, doesn't acknowledge that you're hitting him. It's like. Whoop, whoop. Uh, just doesn't. Rough. Yep. Rough. That's rough, buddy. Uh, so, the one that's bloodied. Um, 
probably just gonna smack Faith. You're right there. So let's just kind of take that great club and wind it up like a baseball bat and whack on the tiefling. So uh, that'll be a 31 to hit you. That'll that'll be a regular success. All right, uh, that's 26 points of bludgeoning damage. And then a lot of damage. Yep, yeah, it's a big hard. It's a big club. Ooh, but I don't think he gets. What's your fortitude DC? Uh, 26. Uh, yeah, the shove attempt fails, so he goes to kind of put some lever behind it, but again, you just dig your heels into the dirt, uh, kind of sinking a couple inches, but not being pushed back. Uh, he's not happy with that. Um, so, I guess it's just going to try again? So, technically this is a third because the shove is an attack action. Uh, so the last attack misses wide. He just kind of easily dodge aside as he tries to bring the club again. Uh, Marion. I'm going to stride to here. I'm going to cast Heroism on Ararshisk. Heroism! It, it lasts for 10 minutes. Oh, plus one. To plus one to actual. everything. Yeah. Perception checks, but not maneuvers? Because they're attacks, but not attack rolls or something? It gives a plus one to skill checks. Okay. It's pretty much plus one to everything. Yep. <laughs> yes. Attack rolls, perception checks, saving throws, and skill checks. Time to be a hero, Arshisk. For how long? Ten minutes. Oh. Long time. Feeling the energy around you, Arshisk. Uh, a little bit of heroism in this moment. I think it's your turn, Marion. Yeah. All right. Uh, coming back to Oarshisk. Fighting two. Let's try to get this guy on the ground. Um, less actions is more better. Uh, athletics. What kind of bonus is it? Status bonus. Um, and what kind of bonus is panache? Uh, circumstance bonus. Hey, I start. To trip. A thirty will. Critically, trip. So as you got him grabbed there, you just kind of like sweep the leg out, do, you know, wrestling maneuver, <laughs> sending him sprawling to the ground. Uh, you can roll that d6 for the damage he takes when he hits the ground. Two. Two whole points of damage. Ugh. Um. So you got him grabbed and prone. Yeah. But I think I might want to do it trip the other one, too. Just to get him on the ground. Uh, although I could hold the grab. Yeah, let's attack and then hold the grab. Why not? Alright. Uh... A 30 yeah. uh, will hit for 9 points of damage. Uh, well, plus, plus 3. Plus 3 more. Sorry. Uh, no, that's all good. Uh, with that, this other one is bloodied. Uh, so I can maintain my... Yep, holes. grab prone and bloodied, but when you punch him, he will react with an opportunistic brawler shove against you. Oh, no, uh, right. So he will attempt to shove... Uh, does take a penalty for being on the ground, but gets a uh, 31 against your Fortitude DC. That's a regular. My Fortitude is 32. Okay. Or 22, rather. 22, rather. All right. It shoves. Uh, 
on a success or critical success, the target is also knocked prone. So you go and this other one kind of like takes a knee and then uses the leverage to push you back by the shoulder. Uh, so we'll push you back away from it. So don't release the grab. think we'll release the grab. Uh, so not grab, but he's still prone. And then that knocks you prone, but then you can kip up. So And I'll jump back and it's like ends with threatening him or whatever. All right. It's my, last, my third action. Okay. Frightened uh, at the end of your turn, so you're now you're only frightened one. All right. That was Awarshisk. Uh, this guy, uh, prone on the ground, uh, he will stand up. I will attack. Yep. <laughs> so many reactions. <laughs> I've been wanting to do that for so long, but they keep pushing me away. Plus one. A 36 will hit. Um, are you f not flanking that one? So this is a normal hit for 12 damage. Yeah. Uh, he's looking pretty rough. Ugh! He gets punched in the face, but he uses that to ugh! bring the club up toward you, O uh, trying to swing the great club in your direction. Uh, but rolls a critical failure. I oh, have more reactions. <laughs> As you wait. And then tries to a later thing. come back on the backswing <laughs> with it. Uh, so, backswing great club. Um, super low. Like, nothing. 19. Uh, so you dodge out of the way and he just seems to get real frustrated with himself. Horatio. Non-lethal. So Electric car. Uh, all right, the one in front makes a reflex save. Uh, fails for the full 13. Looking rough. Uh, the one in back makes a reflex save. Uh, succeeds and takes six. They're still, still up, still fighting. Both of them pretty hard at this point. Faith. Um, I'm gonna go for the one that's. Flanking, that's being that's flanked. All right. Let's see if I can finish him off. Uh, I'm gonna try to punch him. There you go. A 28 will successfully punch for 11 points of damage. God, he's not seeing it as you just come around the side of his head, whack him. And uh, him, him on the other side of the head. See? 12 more damage. Oof, he is looking bad at this point. Ugh. Uh, has to make a fort save. Fort save, save point. nineteen. <laughs> oh, that's a failure. Ah, uh, so he is. Stunned. But it is incapacitation. So if they're higher level than us, it's actually success. Y'all are level eight, eight. now. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's not higher level than you. Okay. Kind of what I thought. We have to remember that, don't we? All right. Uh, 28 points of damage, or 28 to hit, 13 points of damage. Uh, that last one hits him hard. He's just barely kind of like, you know, loose limbed. That was one action, two action. I got one more punch. Miles will take it. Uh, 24. I think that's going to miss. If only he were fright. He's flat. Only somebody had demoralized him. Flat-footed. I so would have gone away a long time ago. Stunned. Yeah, yeah stun so doesn't help. But... The last one just kind of it takes it, but just finds the fortitude to keep on his feet. Uh, but he is indeed stunned. Fabian, <laughs> you got a stunned, staggering guy there, just kind of like flanked. flanked. Yeah, flanked. Let's, uh, let's let's try this again. There you go. How's that? There you go. You take. You've had no luck with the blade end of your rapier, so you just take the little tiny <laughs> pommel there and just dunk uh, <laughs> right on the head. <sighs> he drops the club and kind of <sighs> falls to the ground, uh, out like a light. Wow, that wasn't so bad. Uh, all right. So the other guy is still up. You have two more actions, Fabian. Oh well. Go deal with that guy too. Movement to get over there, and let's strike at him. 
27 shall have, hit. Have you... Uh, were you doing that non-lethally, and did you include that? Taking, yeah, put the minus two to hit okay. from... Uh, make it non-lethal. Uh, he's hurt, but he's not down. And that's my turn. Um, okay, he sees that guy go down. He's like, oh, shit, I gotta tell him! Uh, and goes to uh, whack I mean, you it, real hard, Fabian. It, it, if you run away, we won't tell anyone. Uh, still proceeds to whack Fabian for sure <laughs> to get you out of the way. Uh, ooh, that's only a twenty-three to hit you, Fabian. Oh, you will not hit. Not um, the first hit. Okay, he's got to go again to see if he can hit you on the backswing, and that's a critical. Hit. Oh, well, critical hit. It's a critical hit. Critical miss. Nope. Critical <laughs> hit. Oh. Something. So uh, that is. <clears throat> 450. 42 points of bludgeoning damage to you, Fabian. <laughs> Whap! Uh, and on this third action, we'll use that momentum from the hit to shove you. Uh, so, we'll do that. Do some math. Uh, ooh, but the shove is a critical failure. <laughs> so, instead... No. What is the critical? You Nothing. lose your balance, fall, and land prone. Uh, yeah, so he's just putting everything into it with that hit on you. Fabian, you somehow managed to do some acrobatics of where you just somersault in place, and he kind of loses his balance and then ends up falling prone. Uh, oof. <laughs> Hits doing the my work for me. Uh, Marion. Um... I realized that I forgot to do something really important before we started uh, this fight, and that was cast Vital Beacon. Oh. It takes a minute to cast. Can we uh, retcon that? What is Vital Beacon? It Did lasts. Anything? Yeah, it lasts all day. And uh, you touch me, and it, I heal you. I'll say sure. Uh, this guy doesn't have very good prospects at this point, so <laughs> it would, would probably wouldn't make much of a difference if you cast it after the battle or not. So, right. I'm fine with it. Um. Okay, I'm going to cast heal. Heal at uh, third level, I think, on Oarshisk. using two actions. So, 42 points of damage healed? Yeah, 42 points of damage. 42 heals. Ghostly energy emanates from Marion's eyes, healing your wounds, Warshisk. Thanks. And then I'll move. All right, Marion, you go in through the gate, looking through and seeing peaks images of strange things beyond the gates of the Celestial Menagerie. Uh, that's your turn, Miriam. Oh, Arshisk. I'm going to move here just to make it more difficult for them to get through us. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to do an attack uh, with a plus one. Because of heroism. 17 uh, bludgeoning. 17 bludgeoning damage. Ugh. Uh, as you strike down there on the ground, he is going to attempt to just uh, kick you uh, in response as a shove. So, uh, that's going to be a 30 to shove you. They no. always get that. Whoa, wait. <laughs> It'll be, a, because it's prone, so it's minus two, so 28 shove you. still going to succeed. All right, so, it's, so a regular shove pushes you back, knocks you prone. You can kip up. <laughs> kip up. Um, <sighs> Is that third action to get back into position? So you can punch him, so you can get him when he stands up. I wanted to use a finisher. Um, yeah, I'll step back in position. 
All right. End of your turn. Your fighting condition goes away. You feel confidence, the magic of heroism reigning over you. Horatio. I'm going to stride here, and then I'm going to cast Daze. Hey! Oh, trash damage. All right, so we'll save on this dude. Uh, fails. Uh, takes nine points of mental damage. Uh, is uh, shaking a little bit, but still just a little bit of fight left in him. He's like, I, can just, I just need to get the club and get out of here. Fuck. Uh. Faith. <laughs> it's going to have to get through four attacks first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to punch him. Knock this guy the fuck out. 25 well, does hit he's because prone. he's flat footed. 13 points of damage. It's just just a sliver of energy left in him. Uh, I can still do it. I can still just Go for the KO. Uh, boom! Yeah. With that last hit, you successfully BAM! Uh, hit this guy square. <laughs> has to make a fortitude save. Uh, I think he's probably going to fail. Uh, 25? <laughs> oh, that succeeds. Yeah. So he's not stunned, uh, but he's unconscious. <laughs> It's not stud, but unconscious. <laughs> uh, as this other one is knocked the fuck out. As you uh, lay these two bruisers out on the ground, first and foremost, you get 80 experience points. Uh, but then also you see before you the gates of this wicked, wicked place. A wall of pruned thorny bushes gives way to a delicate wrought iron gate bearing the words Celestial Menagerie in large letters. A wooden sign above them, decorated with winged animals, reads, The delights of Nirvana await. And what might those delights of Nirvana be? We'll find out next time on Really Playing Games, The Extension.